to see how this man will be going to work every morning on time. There is something that I want to say today that I really want and I understood. That generation, they were gold. If you are grandparents, if you have grandparents alive or your great grandparents still alive, really, I invite you to go seeing them often. Because these people were gold, they are treasure. In Africa, we have this saying, we have this quote, this saying, a quote, sorry, a quote from a, a well-known author, African author. His name is Amadou Ampatiba. He wrote a book, but he wrote some books, but the quote that has marked many is when he made a speech at, the United, at UNESCO about the tradition of the oral tradition. And he said this, an old man dying is like a library that burns. That quote means a lot. And what does that mean? It means that you have your grandparents or you have your great grandparents. Everything that I have learned from life and pass that to you, it's treasure. These people are treasure. The way they see life, the way they will teach you about life is so precious. That man Every morning, if you go, he will be at work. And it's not that he was strong enough, no, he was already tired, but he was always forcing. So one day, I think his secretary wasn't there. She, um, she, um, she was sick, she was sick that day, I think, a very nice lady. And, uh, I don't know what happened because I often talk to him because he was very simple, a very simple man. He has his own business. What he was working, it was his own business with his son. They opened a business. And when I talk of business, it wasn't any type of business. Huh? It was a business that they were creating. They were uh, creating um, like architecture or in, something about engineering. I don't know. Um, civil engineer, something like I don't know, something like that like architecture, I mean, they were building uh, stuff in the city, okay, and the man had a very special life because I talked to him often because that man was a treasure. Um, the secretary wasn't there, and that day, I don't know, uh, I entered in his office as usual, uh, you know, he's a very simple man. And uh, we start talking and he showed me a picture of him of when he was sent to World War. No, he was just a child. I mean really a very young teenager. I was shocked when I saw the picture. He said, Yeah, we were sent to the war and we knew that we had to do our part, you know. And I was like, So you went to the war? He said, Yeah, I went to the war. And we were talking about everything, you know, life in general relationship, you know, everything. And he showed me the picture, I mean, and he told me, and I asked him, what make, what, what is the secret of your resilience? You never, that man was always positive. I've never seen that man complaining. Never been rude. Never been cursing. Never, I never saw that. And that very nice, side of him, that part of him radiates so much that people like him so much. He will never, one day he got sick, he was hospitalized, I went there. He was very much like relaxed in his bed, doing uh, some you no know, crossing words. Uh, his wife was stressed, he wasn't. And um, 
he has a personality that was so nice, so nice. And um, I asked him what made him do, I mean, coming. Because sometimes he was really ex exhausted, but he never get exhausted. He was always on time. He would look his watch. He would look at his watch always on time, always on time. And that's something that you have learned for years. Always be on time. These people are disciplined. These people of this, this other, the previous generation, these people have a lot to share. They were gold. So from the war, he said that he got the GI. For, I don't know, it's something for scholarship or relevant to go to school. He wasn't from a big family. Yeah? His, fam his background was simple. But his life was so flourishing, productive. He had this positive personality. Even we were talking about the war because, you know, of course I was very interested in history in general. And having someone who was, who would talk to you about the war, that was the first time I had a veteran of World War talking about the war. You know, it was very interesting. He told me that um, he went he went to the war. He was in the Pacific. He didn't go to the to the war. The battlefield was very bloody. No, it wasn't the, because the battlefield where it was really bloody was at the in Europe and North Africa, I think. Yeah, Algeria. Yeah, North Africa and the Europe side. Yeah, that's where it was really bloody there. Remember that the first uh, the first group, okay, that was sent that um, they cost, how do you say that? They cost at France in Normandy, if you remember during the war. Yeah. And um, he was talking to me like that. And like he said, what I'm doing all that is because I have things I have in mind I must do. I have my wife, I have to take care of her. I mean, this is a man who was already very much more than retired. I mean, he was like, really, he was old. But still, the instinct of being the provider, I was impressed. You have young men today who complain about, oh, she doesn't bring enough money, or he doesn't work. That man say, even if in his whole old days, he said, I have to secure for my wife. I was impressed. I was so touched. And he told me, yeah, I met my wife during the time of the war. She was a nurse. And she waited for me. And I was like, and they were young. Imagine that. He met her. And yeah, he told me, usually men know what they want. They know who they want. Okay. There is no doubt about it. Men always know who they want or what they want. And he talked to me about his career. And I didn't know of that. He studied at the time. He said, school, 